Hey Geeks, Barry here with Geek Out Studio and today I'm going to show you how I sculpted some of the robes for my Dark Angels characters as you can see here. To get started you're going to need a couple of tools, a good X-Acto blade, uh, acrylic rolling pen, and then a variety of sculpting tools. I've got silicone uh, clay shapers. I've got, um, I'll even throw in some metal sculpting tools like you can find from, uh, I think GW sells them and things like that, but a good variety. And then uh, petroleum jelly. Now, before you get uh, started, you will want to assemble your miniatures as completely as possible. Uh, at least basically getting the torso and legs together. Uh, this will help you uh, get the right shape for your robes. I do recommend leaving the arms off as it, it, they'll just get in the way and that's just one more problem that you'll, uh, you can run into. You'll also want to take a little bit of time to snip away any uh, large pieces um, or things that may cause a problem or be in the way or that you just don't like. Uh, for example, here I wanted to take the helmet off because getting the robe up under it would be a lot more problem than it really was worth. And I wanted this one to be wearing the helmet, so I just went ahead and snipped the helmet off. Now, here's where the acrylic rolling pen and some parchment paper and Vaseline will come in handily. Is once you get your uh, green stuff uh, balled up, you'll uh, roll it out as you would like biscuit dough or something. That way you'll get a even and smooth uh, layer of green stuff. And then to get started on the top of the robe, I will actually cut out a very small triangle. And so here I'm just uh, placing it right after I've cut it off. Uh, and I'm taking the time to just kind of place it and press it onto the miniature down by the belt. Uh, things like that and here I'll be cutting away uh, any excess uh, but this is where uh, working with it right now and having petroleum jelly comes in handy because you have so much working time you it's easy to correct mistakes and I'm also this is the only piece I'll be working on I slowly build up a, uh, layers and pieces as I go uh, making sure the previous layer is completely dry before moving to the next piece. So once I have uh, cut off any excess, I put the arm back on to make sure that uh, it's fit and that the robe looks correctly. And now you'll see I'll go in and start smoothing out any mistakes that I, uh, that I had, any fingerprints that I may have put in. Because again, you have plenty of working time uh, to get to get this done. And once it's smooth, I'll take my, uh, my variety of sculpting tools and actually begin sculpting the folds into it. And this is just a matter of actually just lightly pressing uh, into the putty. I don't actually like, you know, jab or draw uh, across it per se. It's just really a just a, a slight press and then move away. Uh, and this is where like pointed uh, sculpting tools like this and some of the metal uh, tools that I have come in handy because all you really have to do is just uh, press it down and you have a nice uh, fold 
where you want it and then you can just move on. And so here I'm using the metal tool to get a little bit uh, some small folds down near the belt and it helps me to again just keep those folds clean and crisp. And then I'll just smooth out any mistakes and repeat. And you'll see me, uh, that's what I do here is I'll, I'll sculpt some folds and then smooth out my edges and sculpt some more uh, folds. And once I'm happy with my uh, sculpt work, I'll just take a paintbrush with some water to smooth everything out and just kind of blend uh, the folds, make sure there's not really any kind of imperfections and just smooth everything out. And then once that's done, I'll move on to the next piece. Now here I'm jumping ahead to show you how I did the bottom part of the robes. And here you can see I'm gluing a little uh, sausage uh, piece uh, between the legs, this will help prevent the cloak from a robe from falling in between the legs. And you can do as many uh, as these as you want. Want I found one or two was fine. Just like before, I rolled out a piece of green stuff, but this time I'm cutting out a trapezoid. Uh, and just like before, I work in small sections. So I don't actually am trying to wrap a whole piece of green stuff around the whole waist of the model. I'm just working in small sections. And just like before, you can see I'm just uh, Finding a place and putting it in and then I will press it on and cut any excess. Now for the legs, I actually don't really do any sculpting. The folds and everything will come in a later part. Uh, but I do let it kind of drape and flow as naturally as it, as it wants to. Because this will help uh, pick out where the folds should be when we get to actually sculpting them. And you can see here I'm just I'm working on another section of the uh, bottom part same thing it's just a place kind of press in smooth out cut any excess and then move along making sure that each previous section is dry uh, and cured before you uh, move to the next one Now here's how I actually sculpt the folds for the bottom part of the cloak. I will roll out basically small sausages of green stuff and cut it to a certain length, uh, a length I feel is appropriate. And then you'll see I will just take that sausage and smash it onto where a fold would appear. So there I'm just taking it and I will press it into place with my fingers, uh, making sure to cut off any excess that hangs over. And once I got it in position, this is where we actually begin to sculpt the fold, is I'll take the, uh, metal sculpting tool with a spatula in and I will start to press and pull uh, the edge to blend it into the base of the robe 
uh, I'm, I hold it at a bit of an angle so that you still end up having a peak once you're all done and that little sausage has been blended into the robe you still have a little bit of a peak and you can repeat this process building on on top of each fold as you go so if you like want to really uh, if your first one is too small too shallow you can go back over it and build that up again making sure that it's dry and cured before you do it Now, once all the sculpting's done and I've cleaned the miniature for, uh, of the petroleum jelly, I'll then go over it with liquid, uh, liquid putty. Uh, this is just model liquid putty I, I had on hand. Uh, you could probably use green stuff to a bit better uh, effect than I did. And I'll paint over the miniature, uh, particularly the green stuff, a couple layers. Uh, and this just helps take out any very small imperfections that you can't see or can't feel with your uh, fingers. And once that's dried, I'll do, then take a very fine grit uh, sandpaper and just uh, sand everything down. This is it's more of like a polish sanding than an actual like uh, traditional sanding. But that's really all there is to it. Technically, not very difficult. Uh, timely, yeah, because you have to wait like 24 hours for each section to cure. But in the end, this is the uh, final result. I hope you liked the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. And I will see you all next time.